Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Nuff Said Podcast. We're talking Season 1, Episode 4 of Agent Carter, The Blitzkrieg Button. We had Ramon's music if we could uh, actually pay for that licensing. This would be the spot for Blitzkrieg Bob. And I said it correctly. I am one of your hosts. I'm Ravenous Rob Southgate. With me is... I am Jumpy Jack Wengroski. And... And I am Adorable Alil. You <laughs> are a Lil. <laughs> That's where we get the X Factor right there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And we have a very special guest with us tonight from the League of Geeks. That's Geeks with a Z. Who's with us? Super Sonic Amazing Sean. Wow. <laughs> so, okay, you got Super Sonic. You were doing some alliteration there. What's up with the A in there? I don't know. I think that was a tribute to a little. To a little right? um, amazing is my thing because that's just everything is just amazing. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know what? Go ahead and give us an amazing. I've heard it on your show. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Now, are we going to say that about Agent Carter? That's what I want to know. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for joining us, Sean. Thank this is you. awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank and I always thought geeks me. started with a G, not a Z. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's geeks with a G. Uh, that is true. That is that true. Is true. Yes. Shall we make uh, Steve jealous and say we've got the best part of League of Geeks on today? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should make him listen to the show. Yeah, right. That oh. would be punishment enough. Oh, he's listening now. He's listening. <laughs> oh, you know it. He's, Sean's got him on. Uh, he's got got muted on his phone so Steve can listen. He's like, they just made fun of me. <laughs> Absolutely. God, I hate those guys. I love Steve. I love him. I love him. Oh, uh, you know what? We we just have to give it to him. That's all it is. Uh, because well, no, we can do it to a little. A little. Let's make fun of you now. Uh, no, sure. Let's move on. So, Blitzkrieg button. What did you guys think of it? I think they're just still discovering Agent Carter's a girl. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the, yeah, but, uh, how many times in this thing do they have to remind us that she's a woman? I mean, I get it. Well, wait, wait. What do you mean? The fact that they're that they're uh, being sexist. Yeah, it's like, I get it. You know, let's, I don't know. I know it's it's part of that whole, like, World War II thing, and they've been really drilling it, but even this, uh, the acting uh, acting chief is sitting at the table you know, after the, the interview with the, uh, the drunk witness is, you know, you know, when it comes down to it, you're a woman. And, you know, that's, you know, kind well, see, of. See, I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, I'll tell you why. Tonight was the first time where I really, it, it all kind of went into place for me. Uh, Sean, did you see the short, the Agent Carter short? You know what? I did not see the Agent Carter short. What the heck are you doing on this podcast? Oh, uh, but <laughs> wait, I love, I love Agent Carter right now. So all right, I love it. All right. What about you, Alil? <laughs> did you, you saw the short, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You've got it yeah. on Blu-ray and you have the action figures. I got it. And how about you, Jack? <laughs> I you watched it, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So in our first episode, we talked about, we couldn't tell where this fit. We said, well, maybe they're just kind of throwing that out, but it didn't make sense. Watching this tonight, I very much understood that this takes place before that short. We're not going to see that moment here. There's no reason to see her get made head of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is all leading up to that. Well, see, and good. Fact, I, didn't, I, I didn't have to see the, the short then. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and the director at that point was Bradley Whitford. and. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what, I have a feeling what's going to happen is when we get to that point in the series, doesn't have to be in this eight episodes, when we get to that point in the series before she transitions to be head of S.H.I.E.L.D., we're going to see Bradley Whitford be put into that lead director role. 
I can see him, and then it'll be like, oh, it all makes sense. Because I'm telling you, that's not the same character. The, the, her, her position, something's going to happen that's going to push her further into being a secretary there. I think I think it's all connected. Now, do you think when she takes over S.H.I.E.L.D. that that's going to be the mini-season finale? Or do you think that that's going to be something they're going to lead up to and... I don't think we're going to see that this year. I think that they are they probably have that plotted out, and when that happens, when that transition happens, it's probably going to be something tied into one of the movies that's coming up. So, how did you like the opening? Because I really enjoyed the the, uh, yeah, the that criminals. That was two hours ago. I can't remember what happened in the <laughs> opening. It it opened with uh, the scene where they're they're going in, and and Jarvis is uh, taking the taking the money to one of the oh right one of the criminals, and they start to do some extortion. Yeah, and Agent Carter is kind of out in the wings, and she completely takes out the three henchmen outside. It was just, it was a great start. And it was like, that's the agent Carter. Yes. I was looking for. So I really did like the episode as, as much as I complain about the, the little reminder about, you know, the 1940s and, and the role of women, you know, I, you know, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hold the door and, and great respect and, and blah, blah, blah. But I want to see more of the parts where she takes those guys out by dropping bricks on their heads and, and kicking <laughs> right. them in the face. Well, you, you know, know what? That, it was actually that that made me think, made me realize where this fit in the story. It was that it was during that that I started piecing it together. Because remember how good she is at it by the time she does it in the short. Yeah. And it reminded me very much of that. Sean, basically, the short was the beginning of this episode. Only she goes rogue. Uh, mm-hmm. She answers a call and goes out and does her thing and then she comes back and they're like yelling at her like you're a woman you shouldn't be doing that and howard stark calls and says you're agent you're the head of shield so that's Uh, basically how it all rolls down spoiler she becomes head of shield okay i kind of knew that though but yeah i'm sure you did are you hey sean are you reading the comics uh which one shield or there's an i i haven't read this yet but uh on the round table we just did which has not posted yet Charlie and Phil were talking about, I guess there's an Agent Carter comic with Howard Stark in it. They said it's really did, fantastic. I see. I didn't see that. I just read, I just got the first issue of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I'm reading that. Is, I, is that one any good? It's it's okay. It's okay. It's not something that I think I'm going to stick with. got a monkey with. in it, man. That's, that's going to elevate it right there. I, I don't think I'm going to stick with it. Maybe because artwork wise, it's not really in my wheelhouse. But I mean, it's it was okay for the first for the first one. It was it was pretty good, and it had everybody from you know the Shield, you know, cart. I mean, TV show. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. You know, I okay. love how they tied that in. <clears throat> Before we go back to Agent Carter, now that I got I got an artist on here, I'm going to talk to him. Uh, no offense, <laughs> to Lil and Jack. Uh, <laughs> I create uh, art. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you spell art, but with an extra letter at the front. Um, so. Nobody yes. laughed at that one. It wasn't funny, but I figured somebody would chuckle. Uh, it has to be funny to get a chuckle. Yeah. Really? Well, I, I don't. I don't get it. Part. Yeah. I, I was. I, I'm focused on your question. I'm ready for you. <laughs> All right. So I was focused. On so moving the on. artwork. The artwork in Shield. I'm a big yes. comic art guy too. I love. I. I, I fall into a, a, a rabbit hole with that, just like we do Spider Man. Uh, one of our podcasters is Kirk Manley, and he's a comic book artist. Uh, he does. He's awesome. You should totally look him up. Uh, he yeah. did, if you saw it, went to Walker Stalker in New York this year or saw the posters, he did that incredible zombified uh, Statue of Liberty poster for Walker Stalkers this year. I and think I've seen that. Yeah, I did it, see that. It's really good. Well, he and I fall into conversations uh, on Facebook about artists like that go on forever about who our favorites are, and then we start sharing pictures. With S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm looking at the cover. I don't have the book. I just have the cover sitting here. I'm not crazy about the cover. Is that what the book looks like inside? Uh, or can yeah. you give me a something to, to grip onto with it, what the artwork is? It it looks exactly like how it does in 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 the book uh, on 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 the on the cover. I'm now I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, because I not actually doing it for me. I actually I actually got the Daredevil cover, but yeah. uh, but the one that you're probably looking at right now, it's exactly like that. The one with it's the really it's. Yeah, it's really like, see, I'm more like, I like kind of whimsical, you know, kind of like big hands, like, you know, kind of stuff that's kind of, you know, 
drawn like differently. And 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 for that, like when something's drawn with like with complete realism, I'm not really a fan of that kind of artwork. Yeah. I respect it though. I do respect it, but it's not that's my. Not, well, I've seen your style, and that's not your style either. Yeah, yeah. I, See, I, I have more of a different flavor. So. I, I have a variety that I go for. You know, I could go from hyper realistic to you know really out there, mm-hmm. and this this type where it's it's trying to be realistic, but it looks kind of sketchy to me. It looks unfinished or something. Yeah, that's where I'm having a problem with it. There, I mean, there, there's some complete lines in there. I mean, there's there's good things about it, but it's just. It just doesn't work for me. It just like I, I'd rather see a whole issue of Scotty Young if if, yeah. if I had a choice. Yeah, you know? no, that'd be cool. Right, right. See, and, and that's that's more my my thing. And, and or or or, uh, or Roberto Ramos. Yeah. If I had, oh if I had yeah. You know yeah, who else so. I dig is uh, Paul Pope. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, give, give me okay. Stepping out of Marvel <laughs> for a minute, but Batman Year One Hundred. Oh my gosh, I could oh, look great. at that artwork all day. Absolutely. All right, I agree. that was art talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll fall back into that. So, uh, uh, okay, where were we? Alil, you haven't even spoken yet. Are you? Uh, are you over there with your uh, your friend? <laughs> <laughs> I will leave it at that. <laughs> I, I was wondering if you were going to say it. I was, I was waiting. Um, no, I fell asleep during your art talk. I hear Sean talk about art all the time. So. <laughs> this isn't um, the art podcast. Can, can I talk about Asian Carter now? <laughs> yes, please. Sorry, hello. Sorry. All right. No, Asian Carter, like, this episode, I think, made up for last, well, not even last week's, because it was a two weeks now. It, it felt more... And and I, and I think it's because of Howard Stark being in this episode. Yes, like I think his well, character—it's it's not Peggy Carter's fault. I like—I mean, Peggy is solid. I mean, she is holding the show. I agree, but I think the energy that Howard Stark brings when he was there and the way the story went—I agree with you totally. I was so into this episode from the word go. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, and it started off really well, and like Jack was talking about with the the scenes. Uh, with with the criminals, where the, you know they were they were trying to get you know, whatever another fifty or hundred thousand dollars off of them. Uh, I I just like that whole scene. I you know Peggy in there Peggy in there kicking butt, and then at the end you know opening the door and seeing Howard just sitting in that train car playing pool. I just thought it was great. That was fantastic. Yeah, and then he throws the cue ball at, at, at another guy's head, which I which I I loved. Yeah. Well, the other thing I was noticing with Howard Stark tonight that I haven't. I haven't gotten this vibe off of him before. And I, I, I really like how the actor's playing him. I Howard's a great character. But do you remember in, uh, I think it was in Iron Man 3, I think. The one where we see the, the footage of Howard Stark when he's older. It's Iron Man 2, wasn't it? Is that oh, 2? Yeah, that's, that's 2. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where we get the, the Disney video. Yes, of, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So tonight when I was watching his performance, I was all of a sudden I was struck by the way uh i can't think of his name but roger from mad men played howard stark in iron man 2 and i i got a little flavor of that here there was something about the way he said something or the way he did something i was like oh he's actually like if you watch this performance and then you watch how we're gonna call him roger plays him in iron man 2 you can see that that's him older i thought that was a really nice little nod I, th- I think, uh, to me, I think I think Howard Stark has a lot of charisma. I actually like how, you know, he's played, you know, on this show and even in the Marvel Universe. And it brings uh, it brings a, a Tony Stark dynamic to it. Yes. So I really, I really, I really enjoy that. And and he's really strong. I wish he was in every episode, but I mean, you know, you gotta kind of you kind of gotta build Peggy Carter at this point. You well, know, yeah, it's but, not called Howard Stark. So right, right, right. Yeah, we I, talked I about that. that. Last time, if you make the focus on him, it, it takes away from the uh, takes away from her. Agreed. Yeah, although yeah, I think tonight he, it was a good balance. I mean, I I never once thought that it was him stealing the show or the the character stealing the show. I just felt that he added. Well, yeah. he had some great uh, comedic uh, points. I think they used that as a technique to kind of play down this like his seriousness. Like you can't really take. Howard Stark really serious because he's a playboy, he's the genius, but he's not responsible like our Peggy Carter. Right. Well, I also think that this is another thing that I got this time watching. He seems a little dangerous. Yeah. Yes, because if they had kind of exposed any, he would have gotten 
kicked out of the uh, he would have got kicked out of the women's uh, dormitory, and they would have found him. And well, it's it's it, not just he that. takes it's a not lot just of chances. The, it's not just yeah. It's it's not just that part. It's like with the with the vial of uh, of Steve Rogers' blood and the fact that he lied to her, and there was just a lot in this where I thought I get why they don't know what to make of him. I mean, we know ultimately his heart's in the right place. He's a genius. He's doing this and he's going to be a war contractor and blah, blah, blah. We know what happens. Right. But, but they don't. Well, you know. And I, I thought, wow, this he is a really dangerous character to these people. Well, you know, he represents really that loss of control and any one of his inventions could take down the country. So yeah, how about he, the pinch he was talking about? Like, well, it would, you know, you push that button and New York goes dark and, uh, you know, <laughs> it'd be like of, generations before it comes back on. Yeah, and then Peggy goes and hits the button. I mean, what the heck was up with that? Well, it's she like, did that because she, she knew that Jarvis, do you think Jarvis was lying or he was trying to indicate to her? No, no, he, he was, was lying. lying. He yeah, was yeah. lying. He, yeah, he was trying to keep her, but he would tug on his ear very. Well, that was yeah. a lie when he was tugging on his ear because yeah, I, yeah, I thought yeah. he was trying to let her know. No, yeah, they she called him out on it. Yeah, okay. they played it up in the beginning in that up in that part where he was giving he was the money. A, yeah, they oh, showed tug on his ear? his ear. Yeah, yeah. And the worst part was it's like the first time he's done it in the entire episode in, in the entire series. You've never noticed they haven't set him up with this. But yeah, this right, was and now all of a sudden, it's it's happened multiple times in the episode. Yeah, yeah. It, that's a I plot think, device. I mean, has Jarvis been watching Carol Burnett? What the heck's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's like he keeps tugging on his ear. I, uh, thanks for this time together. Tug, tug, tug. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm just, not touching old, that one. Yeah, old <laughs> '80s TV shows just like kept popping up with like older older women like tugging on their ears. Like Jarvis, stop it. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, even if he was lying, this stuff like melts stuff and explodes. And so like Peggy just, well, he's lying. So I'm going to hit the switch. Yeah, I mean, right. well, that was pretty irresponsible. Stuff? What would, if it had been that stuff that was in the, the balls in the first episode, yeah. like everything blew up. Okay. I, I, th I think she knew. And I think she, she you know, she, she's good. She knows what she's doing. And she knows how to read people, too. So I, I think she knew that it was bullshit. Excuse yeah. my language. Well, yeah, so, but. But the thing was, is knowing that it's a lie doesn't mean that if she'd have pressed that button, it wouldn't have blown her face off. It just might not be the thing that he said it was. Right, it might not be the pinch that takes out New York. Right. Now, you know, we get the fact that whatever it was, he was, you know, we want to feel that setup that he's doing it for his own gain, but it's really not. It's just the way. But he knew, being his blood, the, the captain's blood, that she would freak, and I think that's why he lied. Right, right. Not yeah, he said he said that though. He said that he said that uh, he didn't want to tell her because he knew that she would freak out. You know that it was Captain America's blood. So right. exactly. Did you so, just notice that when they were uh, experimenting with the the stuff in the lab that and the, the guys in the background kept setting themselves on fire that the fire color changed? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that, that was, was hilarious. Cool. I, that was great, and I wonder if that's a reference to anything. Like, like I couldn't place what it was, but like the blue flame reminded me of the flame around the Tesseract, and I'm like, okay, well, it's not that, but what is it about the different colored flames? It, it, it's just another little thing that I'm sure Charlie will correct us on. <laughs> I like the I like the selfie with the uh, camera pen. <laughs> oh, the camera pen was great. Oh yeah, that was cool. Yeah. And I, 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 I love guess, how she I guess just ahead kept, of his time. Yeah, and she kept holding it up and taking the pictures. <laughs> Right there with the guy in? Why would that guy have any clue that that's what she was doing? They had some great stuff. If you ever get to Washington, D.C., there's a place called the Spy Museum. And they have, like, the best stuff ever. They have these, like, little miniature cameras. They have a little thing called, you might want to edit this, but it's called the Rectal Toolkit. And this is, like, a real, like, real stuff from, from the spy trade. And you know, miniaturized... You know, little cameras and radios, and where does that uh, one go? Uh, <laughs> look it up. Yeah. So, and even like these multi-chambered cars where you could completely hide two or three people. You know, where they're like in the space under the seats, and right, right, like the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, yeah, like the Millennium Falcon. 
I like how you got the little Star Wars reference in there. Heck yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that at all. <laughs> so, you know, back to the, but yeah, if you ever get to DC, go and, and check yeah, out the Spy Museum. Show. It's it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> One person laughs. <laughs> yeah. It takes like an hour to get a laugh here. <laughs> well, it's improving. <laughs> that's true. I haven't switched over to booze yet, so that's good. I, I don't want to jump, but there's like some that really blew my mind in this episode. But I'll let no, 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 that is the big thing. Apparently, there's some breaking news on that too. Yeah, I, I know you guys know already, right? That, that, uh-huh. Yeah, I just read it. Okay, I'll let you guys. I'll let you guys talk. She is part of the Black Widow program, or a Black Widow program. They made it official. Now, I, watching it, what I said, I was watching it with Molly, my daughter, and I said, I mean, it was obvious she was Black Widow when she did those moves. But I said she could be Black Widow's mom. That could be what it's leading to. <laughs> so, um. The Dottie character, who you know, who 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 actually killed the blonde man. That's Mr. Mink. Mr. Mr. Mink. Mink. Mr. Mink, who didn't, who I actually thought, like I said, was going to last a couple episodes, didn't even get like he got like five minutes of screen time, and that was it. Dude, he he got his face ripped off by a girl. Oh my gosh, that was, that was awesome. It was really awesome. I did not. I I thought. Well, well, today the reports are that she, you know, she's part of the Black Widow, you know, uh, training program or something like that. So I don't know is is she is she there to protect Agent Carter or is she there to kill Agent Carter? Well, I, I think that's kind of up in the air still, isn't it? Right. I'm mean, yeah, it's still up in the air. But it's it's it was really awesome to see, and, and at at this level, and you know, in the show, I was I was really surprised to see that kind of character here. Because I mean, Agent you know, Carter, she doesn't do all that kind of stuff. So to see that from another character blew my mind. I was like, "Holy crap! I've never seen anything like that." That was awesome for that TV show, and I, I love it. I'm glad it's it's going in a good place, and I'm really enjoying that. Yeah, the fighting style was really uh, kind of reminiscent of uh, Romanoff, and it's really at this point, it's still I think they're making a deal of it that it's still a Soviet program. And so the Soviets aren't working with really like with the Americans at this point in the war. So, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm sure Charlie will probably have a disagreement, but, uh, I, I think that, that she is operating on the Russian side and, uh, Peggy really can't know that she's there yet. She, uh, Peggy must be va- valuable in some way, or the Russians don't. The Russians definitely don't want the the Germans or Hydra or you know whatever is behind this to to get a hold of any of these weapons. So I think she's kind of in a default on her side, but not uh, not directly. Right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure because. You know, right now it seems like the, you know the Soviets are not our friends, and you know they they kind of brought them up when they were talking about uh, that what was it, that war with the with the with the Germans or with Hydra or whoever. When when uh, I'm drawing a blank on the the guy's name, the the the, the main uh, the boss, when he went overseas to speak with that uh, that Nazi was, that was getting hung. Right, the chief. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I think, I think this is going to play as they're trying to get information from her that they must know that she knows more than she's letting on as a secretary. You know, she's she's got a story behind her. People know who she is. People know right. there's a connection to Captain America and her involvement in all this with the SSR. So I think the you know you know the people she's working for now are idiots. And I'm guessing oh, yeah. the Russians know that know that she's got something, and maybe, and who knows, maybe they're going to try to recruit her. That could be, or or I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty well, much. I mean, well, from uh, comicbook.com, they're talking from the executive producers Butters and Faze's uh, Dottie's dark background and connection to the greater Marvel Cinematic Universe came from a need to create a female foil for Peggy, so that. Oh. You know, and then it just they 
saw it as a, a, a way to kind of go with the Marvel mythology and tie it back into Black Widow. And, um, you know, I think, I think they're just, um, you know, they're just kind of experimenting and seeing where it's not specifically Black Widow. I think it's definitely a, a reference. But this is, this is right from the, from the producers. They've done a couple of interviews and, and, and a lot of people are, are seen to quote it. And I'm, I'm looking at the picture of Dottie and she's got like these kind of deer in the headlights eyes. And it's like, it's like, this girl's crazy. <laughs> yeah. you know, we, I, we are, at first yeah, yeah. I thought it was the, I, 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 you know, cause it's Marvel. Cause it's whatever. I was like, Oh man, maybe he's a shape changer. And he like took over her body. I just didn't realize that he, that she killed him. You know what I mean? Like at first, like I sat there, and I'm like, "Wait, what happened?" And I rewound it, and I'm like, oh, "I did the same thing." Oh, <laughs> Do you see the scene where he he's hid under uh, under the bed with his yeah. mouth just kind of hanging wide open, like yeah. like he's dead, but his his face is going, "What just happened?" <laughs> exactly. I think that's where I got like I don't want to say confused, but I was just like, "Wait, what happened?" <laughs> I like, yeah, I was the same. I was like. Huh? Were you making the Mr. Mink face after that? I think I was. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and like you said, uh, Sean, I, I was really disappointed because I, I could have seen Mr. Mink like, really getting at least two or three more episodes and then getting whacked. I just did not see like this like super competent guy who's been like, taking everybody out with a little automatic pistol. And this like crazy woman from next door goes I want that and then just rips his head off with her thighs it's like <laughs> which was crazy I was I didn't I was like she's like I want that gun I was like okay you want that gun Where did like, that come nothing from? Else. Yeah, I was like nothing else you want that gun and she got the gun <laughs> I'm assuming she got the gun and then she but, still had that like she still has that crazy look in her eye like <laughs> Yeah. Like there is something not right behind those those peepers. That's for sure. Very Black Widow. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be cool. I like the fact that they reference like, all these things from the MCU, but not always directly. And so it gives you like something to talk about. Like even if they never say the Black Widow program, everybody knows. Yet they don't have to pay royalties or reference anything. Yeah, why would they have to pay royalties on any of it? Hey, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it sounds terrible. I'm just calling in on my phone now. Everything went down over here. Yeah, it was like the uh it was like somebody hit the button. Yeah, I blame Sean since he's the uh X Factor right now. Yeah, Hell, Hi Hi Hell Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> Actually what they were gonna do is they were gonna eliminate me and then get on what's his name and it was just gonna become a League of Geeks take takeover. Yeah, that's what you see. Hell Hydra. <laughs> that would have been Batman talking. I, the best part is you said, "What's his name?" So I'm sure he'll love that. Sorry. <laughs> no, we were gonna Jack. We were going to recruit you into Geeks Nation. <laughs> oh, so, I thought you were gonna replace me. Like you were gonna like send a woman from next door to rip my head off. <laughs> you you would like that too much because it would be a Halle Berry lookalike. <laughs> I don't know. I I think I might be moving on to Scarlett Johansson. Okay. She's been so much more successful with the thing, but there will always be a special place in my heart for Halle Berry. I don't care, you know, if, I don't care what they say. You know, oh, she's had plastic surgery. Do I care? No, she's still Halle Berry. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Ugh. So how about that Spider-Man a little? Oh, man, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. No, but, you know, getting back to Dottie was just a great, great addition. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yes, absolutely. I'm, yeah. I, I, I hope I hope her and Agent Carter go at it. I'm really curious to see. Because, first of all. So how do you mean? Like, well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, both. Well, if if I had if I had my choice, it'd be both ways. But you know, just you know, whatever. You mean anyway. fighting? You mean in talking and fighting? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. <laughs> Spitting on each other, all type of crazy stuff. Anyway, <laughs> um, but well, I I can't wait to see how they interact with each other, and if they fight or they fight together. 
I, I love the suspense in that, and I'm hoping that it, 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 it you know, it actually, it, it leads up to something really good. But my cra- the crazy part was, I actually thought that the girl that worked in the diner was, you know, was an agent or something like that. But I'm glad that she wasn't. She's just a regular ditz, I guess. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it would have made more sense. No. No, the blonde I'm so is confused. Dottie. Welcome yeah, back to the show. No, you know what? <laughs> I, I was confused too today because some of the posts on social media where they were talking about this had her, her friend from the diner, in that right. well, picture and, as as you know part of the black. That picture of them had had Dottie and Carter in the diner, and it, she looked like the waitress. And I'm like, that's not the waitress. It was very confusing. So I thought maybe she dyed her hair. Maybe I missed something. No, she's the she's the one where uh, uh, the the waitress and Agent Carter were kind of having this. Well, uh, well, Agent Carter kept wanting to blow her off because she didn't want to get her killed, and and she wanted to keep her work separate. And so the waitress keeps coming to the door, and every time she gets like a little miffed about the whole thing. And while they're in the middle of the spat, the, the house marm comes up with this, like, really tall blonde lady and says, oh, this is your new neighbor, Yolanda, or whatever, uh, you know. Yolanda! Buddy. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, it's a, it's, it's, anyway. So, I was gonna. Wow. <laughs> the, it, it was. It never mind. I couldn't explain it if I tried. So really, I, I thought you were doing just a wonderful job. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Well, I'm. You know, like Doctor Seuss book. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. But you know, the the whole thing is they introduced her kind of in passing in between one of these little spats. So it was very. It was kind of very nonchalant. You, know, you, you really didn't think much of it. It was just that other girl got kicked out, and the, you know, here's the new girl. Oh, you know, yeah, here, here yeah. she is. And then you. Oh, re- that's right. She's the one that came in when the one was kicked out. I got it. With the, yeah. she had the guy come up to her room. So yeah. really, you're thinking about that. You're thinking about the spat between her and the and the waitress, and she just kind of slipped on by very quietly, and then it just explodes on the scene. I, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. how, how about it was fantastic when when she did those Black Widow moves. Now, you, uh, I think Sean, you're the one that just said uh, the uh, that you'd like to see them maybe fight together. I don't yes. think so. I think she's going to be a nemesis because I, I, Black I, I, Widow. No, not together. Black fight Widow against a, each other. That's what we were talking about. They're going to no, fight no, no, against but I, each other. That's yeah, but I would have I would have liked to see them, you know, kind of interact with each other, like you know, fight on each other side too, as well. But it doesn't matter. However, they however I get it, I'll, I'll take it. You know. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a great scene though. When when the the uh, I thought that Nazi was going to be the nemesis, and when he he pulled the gun <laughs> on her, and she was like, "Oh, is that a revolver or whatever?" She is that automatic. <laughs> That was fantastic. I, I did not see it coming at all. Yeah, that's... and I love the Nazi too. I love that gun. That scene when he shot the other guys. That was oh yeah, that, that was awesome. all really awesome stuff. Yeah, I like the... we got a little gadgety thing going. That was cool. Yeah, I like I like the little like glitch of reality where the little newfangled little uh, automatic pistol kind of stops. And just as he kind of winged the guy, and he's still like trying to talk while yeah. Mr. Mr. Mink is is trying to like get it like back together, and just continues. So it's like, oh, 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 there it is, and then finishes shooting him with automatic fire. Yeah, that was a nice little moment. That, that the whole thing. This was really an excellent episode. So, what little moment have we not talked about yet? And I thought I don't know. I was gone for half of it, so I don't know. Stan Lee. Uh, Stan Lee. Yeah. At the yes. Booth. And man, Miles, Miles better than he was in the in the movie when his last appearance, where we talked about like just how awkward it was, and this was like it was a perfect, it was a perfect scene. What was his last appearance? What movie was his last? Oh, appearance? Jack, you're not. He, Jack's thinking about his appearance on Agents of Shield. Uh, that was terrible. Oh, right, right. Not the movie. The uh, the TV. Oh, show. Yeah, not the movies. Well, but yeah, on, he, on Agents of Shield, uh, Sean, you you watch Shield, right? Yeah, I do. Okay. I'm, get, Ooh, I'm not getting into this. One. I'm not getting into it. I'm not getting into it. I have enjoyed. Look, I have enjoyed the last few episodes. It's gotten stronger, 
So I can't wait till next season or till till you know it comes back on. So it, it, right, I'll give it benefit. Right. It, it, well, it, the, it, the first it, half of the first season was rough. Yeah, very and rough. and there have been dips. We admit it freely, you know. But do, do, do know, we? Because it, a little doesn't. Getting, <laughs> well, a little doesn't, but a little's crazy. <laughs> I just like anything in the Marvel universe. I don't care. Yeah, it was like an yeah. aerofloat uh, trying to get out of uh, <laughs> out of uh, some like really bad part of Russia somewhere. Whereas there's no. There's no like takeoff strip, and there's potholes, and it, the the whole first half of the season took way too long to kind of get off and get running. Yeah, right, right, to get off the ground. Uh, yeah, so there was a the episode. It was actually a a really good episode, but the Stanley cameo was terrible. Uh, they're on a train, and Stanley kind of fumbles in, and there's like a blonde kind of holding him up, and you're like. They played it up like it was going to be a big deal, and then he did he even have a line really. He did, but it was delivered almost like a robot, and it, it was weird. Yeah. It was weird. I mean, yeah, he's not an actor per se, and he's getting older. But this just was like, like he did like they had him on set, and they didn't have anything written for him, and they went improvise it, and he's not an improviser. Wait, and it made no sense. I think he kind of made a big deal, like he wasn't gonna, like he wasn't gonna be doing this anymore, and then he did, and then we all really ridiculed him for it. So, <laughs> you know, suck, old man. Yeah, it's like, hey, what do you mean you're not coming back? Hey, get your butt back up here and make these appearances. Okay. Hey, that was terrible. Don't ever do that again. Yeah, and the fact that he was sitting next to Howard Stark was really great. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like yeah, you kind of deserve that one. It's <laughs> yeah, so Sean, you you you're not a shield guy, but you are digging Agent Carter. I I am, you know what? I'm a shield guy now. I I, I enjoy it. I, it's not. I mean, I'm after not this saying, conversation. I don't know why, but I'm not saying it's my best show right now. But I I watch it, and I, I and to be honest, I, I watch it because of a little. And, and he's persuaded me. He's persuaded me to watch this show, so I do watch it. So we at least have something to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, our sh- our own show would be very silent. It would just be- right, right, so right. In other Skill words, you guys just cater to a little by like mentioning Marvel stuff. But otherwise. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's my teammate. I got, I got, I got. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like being on a shield. You know, you gotta kind of roll with the punches, I guess. I, I don't okay. Know. <laughs> um, I'm a red shirt on Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets killed off every week. Um, yeah. uh, but no, I'm, I'm really I'm, enjoying. I'm really, John, I, I'd be yeah. a little nervous about you know equating it to Shield because let's face it, the black guys on Shield. Uh, they've been <laughs> shot at. They've been they're killed. Like, yeah, like what? you know, you got you might be in trouble if you guys are shield over for, there. For our geek friends, it's like being the red shirt lieutenant. Yeah, I guess something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you but, know, well, you know, at the beginning episode, they're gonna get shot. Yeah, yeah. they ain't gonna be on episode <laughs> three. That's for sure. See, that's what's ridiculous. <laughs> I do think it's pretty ridiculous that that they've done that. I mean, they they have two black guys on the show, two of our favorite characters. One of them they turn into like a zombie guy, right. and the other guy they kill. Yeah, but zombie <laughs> guy's gonna like be ten lines this season. Yeah, zombie guy's gonna be back though. I mean, Max, you know, Max gone. No, I hope so. Oh, well, I hope. Yeah, so. he's back to normal. He'll he'll be back. Just have faith, man. We'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll look forward to another black guy coming in. Or, you know. I, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> I think it's required by NBC uh, law, isn't it? Is, is it? I think Morris Chestnut's looking for a job, so. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> Great. He usually pops well, in the middle of a show or somewhere. Well, I want to. I want to say I. I am enjoying Agent Carter. I. I. I'm, I must. I must say I'm vested in it, so I have to watch it. Good. And, and I'm. I'm. I'm like. I'm, I really like it. I really enjoy it. So. I, I got. Yeah, I, I think it's a surprise how great it is because I thought it was going to be good. I was excited for it, as we've talked about a lot on here, but it's way above my expectations. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and I did notice <laughs> they finally fit in some big band music when uh, when Peggy like turned on the radio finally. Yes. Like, oh, there it was, and then it was gone again. It's like, oh, as, as a resident musician, I would think that you'd be coming up with who these bands are. You have not told us one yet. Uh, well, that last one I'm pretty sure was Tommy Dorsey, but tonight, yeah, 
Well, that was whatever night it was yesterday. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it was some guy with a trombone. How's that? How do you like that one? There you go. All right. <laughs> well, I, I got some. I, I got some spoilerish news here that I, I've been kind of, you know, totally oh, my thumbs here while you guys are huh? talking. Okay, um, but, uh, wait, 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 wait. I haven't seen it, so let me mute my mic. Just kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> you mute your we're, mic. You'd still hear it, you nut. That was the joke. <laughs> we were we were talking about Dottie and you know how she's going to be a foil and you know or or we think that she's going to be the foil right. going forward and it looks like we're going to get an episode with some of her backstory oh oh because they cool. have casted a young Dottie who will be in one episode and there's only four episodes you think left. it's going to be Dottie from Pee Wee Herman no oh, that would be <laughs> she'd be old Dottie at this point. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at her picture. <laughs> this, I mean, she can't be about like maybe 24, maybe 25 at most. How young does she have to be? Well, the picture of oh, young she's Dottie got 21 years younger like, she could go with. It looks like she's probably like 10 or 12. Okay, yeah, you can't. It's go probably going to show her getting taken into the Black Widow program. Oh, right, 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 right. So it looks like you they know, will probably be talking about in... the program. Yeah, she's probably in the middle of getting orphaned, and that's we'll see a little backstory. Oh, I, well, I apparently. Wonder, what were you gonna say? Well, I was gonna say apparently they're gonna play into Black Widow's backstory a little bit in Age of Ultron. So I've heard. So that's what I was just gonna say. I right. wonder if what we're gonna see here is going to lead us into that Age of Ultron. Like, like you're gonna see the threads of the Black Widow program here and there. Right. You know, because it is, they did, did say that Agent Carter does tie into Ultron. So I wonder if that's really where it's tying in. Probably so. Unless they go to Wakanda or something like that, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah. Is that some place up in Wisconsin? <laughs> oh, yeah. They have, they um, have, <laughs> what was it, Vibranium? I don't know what the hell that shit is called. Yeah. <laughs> They have vibranium factories up there. <laughs> <laughs> of course, oh. they do in Wisconsin. That's what we we oh. go up to yeah, get our vibranium right every summer. <laughs> it's right go. next to Mouse House Cheese House. Yeah, I was gonna say that's that's where you get those cheese curds. <laughs> that's right. Those are They're great. Vibranium. When you chew into them, like they they squeak like little you know on your teeth. It's oh like, hey, yeah, right? they do. Oh yeah, just like that vibranium. I love that love stuff. that vibranium. God, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's what plants need. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> All right. Wow. Did right, anybody get my idiocracy? Or... Uh... What was that? Did anybody get my idiocracy reference? No. You're just full of idiocracy tonight. <laughs> no, I didn't get it. It's, if you haven't seen that movie, all I'm going to say is watch it. Oh, idiocracy. That, that's the one by uh, Mike Judge, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, it goes way into the future, but. Basically, they have this Gatorade type product, and they use it like to feed the plants. and And none of the plants are growing anymore. But the the um, the advertising companies, like their motto is, "It's what plants need." Oh, <laughs> but it's all I got your reference now. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, yeah Age of Shield. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sean's like put a lot of this out, don't they? Uh, boy, you guys so, go off. I'm, guys trying, go I'm, just to, I'm just trying to geek it up a little bit, you know. Oh, that's okay. oh Jack, believe me, you geek it up. Hey, so, I, I do what I can, man. That's right. So, what else do we have to talk about with this one? The uh, after credits, we're now, getting the Howling Commandos. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. just gonna say we got Howling <laughs> Commandos next. There were, there were after credit scenes. I yes! missed it. Man, you gotta wait till the end. That's why the Marvel show. There's always after credit stuff. I I mean, even when it's not a Marvel show, they have like, "Here's the crap from next week." Oh, Sam Jackson showed up and he shot people. You Uh, missed it? I missed. I missed the whole whole thing. Dumb dumb Duggan comes up in all his glory and that cool hat with the sergeant stripes on it. Oh man, it was killing. So. Is it all of the, uh, it, it looked like it was all the guys, because one of the things I had read was that they only had a couple of the uh, of the, the Howling Commandos, but it looked, I didn't see anybody missing. It looked like it was all of them, didn't it? Was, was Derek Luke there? No. Derek Luke was there? 
I see, didn't see him there. God, see, see, they see no black guy. There you go, right that, there. You know what? That, <laughs> oh, you had to go what? there, didn't you? I had to. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. You know what? Maybe he's in the opening credits and they shoot him. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh probably so. so. Probably so. Gosh, oh, that's man, weird. that's just wrong. You know how it goes. I can't. I can't wait till the Black Panther uh, movie. <laughs> yeah, at least something. You know what's go gonna be terrible that. on that one? Black Panther's gonna show up, shot in the first minute of the movie. <laughs> it's like, damn it, what? Uh, really? And then Robert Downey Jr. takes over as Black Panther. No, even no, worse, Justin White Bieber Panther. takes over as yeah. Like he puts White on the black. Panther. Yeah, but Justin Bieber does that whole talk and everything. Like he's gonna be the Black Panther, and they're gonna be like, no, really, he's he's King of Wakanda. He doesn't talk that way. Yo, man, I'm the Beeb. <laughs> I've, got cheese, I'm just, I've got these cheese curds and I'm ready to wrap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the worst. Oh, boy. Can, oh, we, please. can we just make sure that he ends up, because at some point he's going to end up in something. Can we make sure he ends up in a DC movie? Ooh, Bieber? I don't want yeah. to be a DC movie. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't want to, I don't think we should even admit him as, 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 like, as like any kind of person. Like, No, get him in the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yeah, now you're talking like a little. Uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, World War Two uh, dive bombers. The uh, suicide. Yeah. <laughs> bombers. Kamikaze. Kamikazes. Oh, yeah, Kamikaze. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get him All involved right, in like, a Kamikaze thing. What's up? A little and I talked this out. What do you think of Suicide Squad? Do you think this is going to be a tank or is this going to be all right? Well, uh, being a DC fan, I um I don't think it'll I don't be. Care a if you're tank. a DC fan, you can tell whether it's going to be bad or not. <laughs> well, depending on. Who they get for Rick Flag at this point? Uh, I mean, I'm still, I'm still good with it because I like Margot Robbie. Nobody's I mean, I like taking the Rick Flag role though. He, everyone keeps refusing it. We're at the point where they're going to ask a Lil next week to be Rick Flag. Well, probably so. <laughs> Stop. Hey, doing he's going to turn it down. <laughs> why, yeah, why, why do you think they're turning soul it? to DC to be in that movie? <laughs> a little, a little will turn it down because it's not a Spider-Man movie, so he'll turn it down that's anyway. Right? Do you think that's why people are turning it down? I mean, what about this? Or is everybody got got them spooked? I, I'm telling you, I think, I, I think it's not because I, I think it's just not a powerful character, and people just don't want one. People don't want to take on that role. First of all, everybody in Hollywood wants to be in a comic book movie, but they don't want to be a shitty character. Oh, dude, everybody, right. Everybody wants to be a big character at this point, and it's not just not everybody can't be a big character at this point. You know, I got the perfect guy, Mike Roberts. Who's Mike? Ju- Roberts? Ju- isn't it? Isn't it Michael Roberts? Uh, Julia's brother. He's like in the, he's in <laughs> Eric Ro- Eric Roberts. Yeah, he's in like every. Yeah, he's a memorable guy. Memorable guy. He's been in like guy, Mike Roberts. Mike Roberts. Julia Roberts you know, so Eric Roberts. You know, Julia Roberts' brother. That's all you need to know. Wow. You know, and he's friends with uh, he's friends with Halle Berry. I'd be on that movie then. Dude, he would be like all over him, that role. He would be perfect for that. You guys aren't DC fans because you really are just, are just calling out crazy names, right? <laughs> no, he's like the B guy. Like He's like he's the best B uh, like leading man ever. He's in like the crappiest movies. And you always he's go, actually, you know what? Jack's right. Actually, he would be good casting for, for Rick Flagg. Believe it or not. <laughs> He has to be younger. He has to be kind of like he has to be able to hold his own with with uh, with the characters now. Like Will Smith is not an older guy; he's a younger guy. And and you got then you got. Wait, um, wait. You said Will Smith isn't an older guy. He's gonna have, to have a Walker by the third movie. Yeah, but I mean, he still looks young. He's not like super super old, you know. He, yeah, I, I think Robert I think he can isn't hold that old either. I mean, you, you put a yeah, little. But he's you know, older than Will Smith. But- well, you put a you, know, you put a little shave on him and some makeup, and you know it's like uh, seeing Sean Connery run in in in, in uh, the uh, League of whatever gentlemen, extraordinary gentlemen, extraordinary I, gentlemen. I, I well, first of all, that character was old anyway, so yeah. you gotta kind of yeah, that's, that's okay. But look for Rick Flag. I mean, I think that they'll find a young character or you know, a young actor to to play that role. It's it's only a matter of time at this point. Um, I don't know, I think, man. I'm nervous I think, about this film. I think I think that the if if Superman v the Bat, v, uh, Batman v Superman plays well, then I think Suicide Squad will will be okay. It's just Batman v Superman has to has to lay the groundwork, and yeah. if it lays if it lays the groundwork, then it, we're we're good. Because once that lays down, then everything is set up at that point, and then we can just play everything out to the sunset. So. I'm a DC fan. I'm riding with them. I'll see how far it goes. I I, I wanted I wanted to be good. That's all. So we'll see. 
I want it to be good too. I like I like everything, and I don't care if it's Marvel or DC. But I just have a real bad feeling about this. I I think Batman v Superman is going to be a mess. What? And I think it's going to I think it's going to lay the groundwork that's going to show us. I mean, it's all a mess. Mm. I I do not think it's going to be a strong run. And I would not be surprised if partway through this master plan they have, everything gets pushed back and stopped, just like what happened with Spider-Man. Did you like Superman? I or did. Steel? <laughs> I, I did. Yeah, it took, yeah, it took a minute for you to for you to say something. <laughs> well, yeah, well, oh, I, I did. I I'm did. Hang, I'm hanging up now. I'm gonna hang up now. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> no, no, man. No, listen. I, you know what? I was actually a much bigger fan of the one that nobody likes, the one before that with Brandon Routh. What? I did. I like that film a lot. A little. A little. A little. A little. Yeah. I'm hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. You don't I, even like the right one. Come on. I, I, what I didn't like about it was the whole thing with the sun. That was stupid. There was a lot wrong with that movie, but there was a lot that I liked. There was there were things I liked. In in Man of Steel, I liked it also, but I have not reapproached it, and that tells me a lot. I haven't felt the need to rewatch it, and that's. That's telling me that it didn't connect with me the way that that you would think it would. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, man. The second that came out, I was on it again. Now, did you like the Donner films? Were you a real f- big fan of the Donner films, the original films, or yes? See, I see. I wasn't. I hated those. Okay. I, I just liked all those. So it because it really. I mean, when I was younger, I was okay, but as I got older, my my Superman brain, it, it kind of got, it, it got to a point where I kind of want to see more. And then as I watched the cartoons and the Justice League, uh, the Justice League, and those uh-huh. cartoons, yeah, yeah. My, my brain fell into a, a point where Superman can do this, but we haven't seen him do that. Right. We haven't yeah. seen, oh, we I'm haven't seen Superman perfect. let go yet. Right. So, so in Man of Steel, we've seen Superman let go. And that's, and I that's the that. part that I want to see. And I want to I want to see destruction. I want to see Superman fly through buildings, fly through buildings when he goes against Dark Side or when he goes against any foe. At this point, okay, I think that's where where <clears throat> I'm coming from with that. Okay, give me s- something different. Like I didn't need to see Zod again. Did I like Zod? Yeah, sure, but it was Zod again. Right. Give me Dark Side. Give me Brainiac. Let him fight. You know, abomination or what? Whatever his guy. You know what I mean. He looks like the abomination. It's Marvel's version, DC's version. Yeah, Doomsday. Doomsday. Let's see some of that. Let's go crazy. Let's deal with that that thing where they have uh, the the planet or you know the uh, city from Krypton in the jar. You know, that's what I want to see. Well, Rob, but you got but you got to understand. You got to lay a groundwork at first. Yeah, you have. You have you have to from from Zack Snyder's perspective, you have to start from the beginning because you can't just jump right. into something again. Here's his origin story again. But I'm but I was okay. But see, it wasn't a great origin. It wasn't an origin story where it told from the beginning. It laid like little spots here and there here because it wasn't a whole origin story. It was an origin story, but it wasn't. And it, it just well, laid it just laid groundwork for something even bigger. And I, I enjoy, I enjoy, I love the mass destruction. I don't care what anybody says. I love mass <laughs> destruction on any in any movie. So I, I, I just love, love it. whipping you up. I think that's what I love more than anything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> get you all go. <laughs> a little, a little nose. Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah. It's why I'm quiet right now because <laughs> yeah. if I start chiming in, the show will never there? end. Yeah, yeah. Let me stop. Let me stop. I, I'm gonna stop. Let's get back to Agents of Shield. Close it out. Let's, let's no, keep we it don't moving. Need to stop. This was that was good. That was good stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm with you though. I, I it, as much as I'm I'm nervous about these things. Don't mistake what I'm saying. I would love it if we had just as many good DC movies as we have Marvel movies, and it was just every and then we get the Star Wars movies in the mix. I mean, come on, like. Every weekend for the rest of my life, I'll be seeing a Marvel movie, a DC movie, Star Wars movie, you know, Terminator movie, and they better be good. That Terminator movie is going to be terrible, but okay. please, it's going to be it's, terrible. It's, it's it's good to be geek right now. Let me just say it like that. It it's is good, good it to is. be geek. Yeah, all Where's the that Marvel, teach? all the all the stuff coming out is it, really cool. Yeah. So yeah. Well, Except for Suicide wait. Spot, it's gonna be terrible, and I I don't <laughs> want it to be. You know, I found a I was going through my uh, my comics uh, 
that I had out in the garage. I was trying to find those Marvel New Universe comics, and uh, I found I had a bunch of Suicide Squad books, like like from the 80s or something. Like I don't even remember reading these. I started looking through them, like, oh, these are so sweet. I don't think that's the story they're doing. I'm uh, nervous. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh, you're nervous too. You're not admitting it, but you're nervous too. <laughs> I don't think I'm nervous. I'm Are cool. you excited? Were you excited that it might be Oprah? Because I know Alil was. Uh, no, I, I I wanted it to be Viola Davis because she's she's uh, perfect Oprah, casting. Oprah's yeah, Oprah's nice. You know, it's okay, but I think Viola Davis is so much of a stronger dramatic actor right now at this point that she can command that role. Well, they were going to have Oprah do it because she was going to actually give everybody that went to the movie a car. <laughs> and that way they guaranteed to get an audience. No, I think Viola Davis is perfect for that role. Yes. I'm excited for that. Uh, I, I, I think it's it's spot on casting. I'm not sure about some of the other casting. Although, I, I you know what? I'm not, I'm not dissing any of it. Yeah, I, except for the Will Smith one. I think that one's weird. I just don't buy it. I think that's a move to get Jaden Smith. Oh yeah, I static shock. That, and then Jaden Smith's going to get his role, and then we're all going to. There is the Bieber role we were talking about. It's Jaden Smith is the Black Bieber. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He'll be static shock. They'll, they'll, they'll give. Him oh, that'd be shock. terrible. Eh, static shock's not that bad. I, I can see him playing static shock at this point. Yeah. I think we should. That that and I, Jaden Smith is. I think we should get Vanilla Ice to play Bieber's part as. <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla Ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. You, guys, you guys really hate Bieber. <laughs> oh, he's the worst. I'd rather listen to Vanilla Ice than than hear anything from him. Well, Jack, like- he's down in Miami, isn't he, or is he still breaking Amish or whatever that show was he was oh, doing? Good God, I don't know. <laughs> he was I like I like Bieber's last album. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'll, I'll be I'll be the first person to tell you it was actually pretty cool. I didn't mind it at all. You'll be the first and only person to tell me that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, and the you. sad the sad thing is at this point, you know, that might be true, but I will never be that curious to go and listen to it. That's right. Well, it all depends on what kind of music you like too. Is he he was it was more hip hop than any than anything. So well, it, it Yeah, I mean if you're kinda of like if you, if it kinda of hits you in the forehead accidentally and go, Yeah, that's kinda of cool. But there's <laughs> gotta hit you in the forehead accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> but I would never go looking for a Bieber thing and go, wow, I wonder if he got better this time. <laughs> right. I yeah. was curious. I'm not going to lie to you. I well, was that's okay. All right. And, you know, and I won't say I wouldn't, you know, I, I'd like to see Wendy Williams in that part, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Instead of Oprah, I'm, you know. And on that note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the heck? Wendy I'm out of here. Wendy and Bieber. There you go. <laughs> No, Sean, this that was that was good, man. <laughs> that was funny. Um, all right, I, I mean, are we done? I think we're done. I think let's stick a fork. I, in I think it. we'd done a while ago. Uh, you can edit out the last half hour. We wouldn't even know. No, it's fun. Uh, Sean, thank you so much for being on. This was fun. I appreciate. Uh, it. You, you might want to come back. Maybe we'll have you back uh, when the season's over, and we'll do another little. Uh, like a recap of a- of Agent Carter. Do you want to do that? Absolutely. I'll jump on. Certainly. Awesome. Whatever we do, we don't want to let Steve on. No, I'm kidding. It'd be awesome. We should actually have Steve on, too. We could do a little uh, cross, cross-pollination of the shows. Hey-oh. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> a little over there like, I'm going to pollinate right now. i got my yeah. Spider-Man on. It sounds just uh, like- <laughs> Yeah. All right. I, you know what? I need to. I need to go deal with Comcast. My cable went out. So uh, not my cable. My internet. I. Uh, all right. I think that's it. Unless you guys have anything else. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. All right. Well, that's it. You can find past episodes of this and all our other podcasts at our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at r southgate. You can follow the show on Twitter at Nuff Said Pod. Uh, Jack. Where can they find you? At J. Wengroski and at Blacklist Pod, my other SMG show. Yes, and a little and Sean, why don't we do a little? Do yours, and then Sean, I want you to promote your artwork and everything too. Oh, cool. So go ahead, a little. All right. Well, you can find Sean and myself and Steve, who's not on here, on our other podcast, The League of Geeks, and that's Geeks with a Z or Geeks with a G, as Jack <laughs> likes to say. Uh, also on Twitter at L-O-G-E-E-K-Z. We have a website at uh, 
www.theleagueofgeeks.com. And we're also on Facebook, so check us out. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can catch me uh, <laughs> on the League of Geeks as well. Um, but also, you can check out my artwork. It's uh, createinkstudios.com, and you can catch me on Instagram um, at createinkstudios.com. <laughs> Ink spelled with a K. <laughs> um, yeah, and you can always check out my uh, cool artwork. I'm usually at the conventions and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, come check me out. <laughs> yeah, man. I you know I don't know if you've talked about it on here. I've talked about it on other shows, but Sean makes some great artwork. Uh, I know he was saying he's a DC guy, but man, that Spider-Man print you do is the best. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Rob. I, really I do. love it, and and you've got a really cool X-Man one. I mean, everything. I just I really enjoy your site, so I encourage everybody support the artist. See him at the cons. Go to his website. Order a print. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. My pleasure, man. All right, that's it. Thanks again for listening, everybody. We will talk to you next week. Until then, enough said. Enough said. Enough said. Enough said. Enough said.